Do you want to take awesome star photos or Milky Way photos, but just not sure how to do it? Well, let me show you. Will Simpson here, and welcome to Exploring Photography. I love star photography. It's one of my favorite things because there's something so peaceful and exhilarating about looking up at the night sky and being able to take those photos just makes me so happy. <laughs> and that's why in this video, we're gonna go over the simple basics of night photography. Things like finding focus, the settings that I use, basic edits, stuff like that. We're not gonna be getting into star trackers, masking, stacking photos, anything complicated like that. Just the simple basics so you can take what you learn right here, go out tonight and take some great star photography. Now I'm actually in Virginia at a beautiful place called Dream Rock Silo. This is a fully converted and renovated barn and silo into a home and actually three suites for Airbnb. I'll actually link the Airbnb below because if you ever never stayed in a silo, well, I highly recommend it. It's, it's really cool up there. Plus, it's a great place to practice your star photography as the light pollution is one of the lowest on the East Coast. Light pollution plays a big part in star photography. The more the light pollution, the less you'll be able to see clear nights, uh, hundreds of stars, things like that. I'll actually link a website that I use to find the light pollution in different areas in the description below. One of the biggest and probably the most common mistake that I see in beginner night photography is finding focus, including myself. When I first started, I would set the lens to manual, which is correct, and then I would crank the focus all the way to max focus. I mean, the stars are a bajillion miles away, so it only makes sense to get the farthest focus. And that's where I made my mistake. Each lens is different, but every lens has a, what's called an infinity focus range. At least I think that's what it's called. For this video, we'll just call it that. And basically what that is, is that's the point of focus that says anything past this is, is the same focus range. For example, if you were to focus on something that's, let's say, 100 feet away, and everything past that 100 feet would be at the same focus range on your lens setting. This is the infinity range. Now you can, most of the times, focus past that point, but if you, if you turn the focus past that point, it, it tends to blur things. So finding that infinity focus range is what makes your night photography sharp and crisp. So how do you find your infinity focus range? Well, if you have autofocus, it's very simple. Simply put your lens into autofocus and then find something like a tree, a building, something with high contrast that's a good distance away. Not too far, not too close, but uh, maybe 100, 200 feet, something like that. And then look through the viewfinder and focus on that. Once you focus on it, you have found your infinity focus range. But then switch your lens into manual focus mode. This will keep it set. For my lens particularly, it's this little L bracket thing. I can actually rotate it farther, but this works perfectly for night photography. If I rotate it farther, it tends to blur the stars. If you don't have autofocus, then it's a little bit more complicated. I recommend using a tripod, putting your camera into live view mode, and then focusing on that object in the distance adjust it until you feel like you got it sharp and then take the picture zoom in on that picture and make sure that it's really sharp if not just keep tweaking it until you find that you have a very sharp focus on that object in the distance you might have to put the photo on your computer just so you can really see it clearly whether manual or autofocus i recommend either taking a picture of where you're infinity zone is or marking it on the lens or putting a piece of tape that way you don't have to find it every time and when you want to take night photography you simply just adjust it to that point and then you don't have to adjust it every single time or or go through the process of finding where your infinity focus range is i also recommend using the lowest f-stop that your lens can go when doing this because it's the same that you're going to be using when you're taking pictures at night because you're going to want the most light allowed in that your lens can do. Now there's some key things that you're gonna need when doing night photography. A tripod for sure, potentially a flashlight, it just makes things easier. If you have like a wireless remote, it's not required, but it does make things easier. Depending on where you're going to take night photography, take what you need to be safe. You know, be wary of wildlife, don't trespass or break any laws, things like that. Night photography is a lot of fun, but if you're out and get eaten by a bear and come back to me and say, damn it, Will, look at me, I got eaten by a bear, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm probably just gonna say, well, was the shot worth it? <laughs> 
So let's talk about settings. Well, first off, you're gonna get a much better photo and have much better editing potential if you're shooting in RAW format. If you haven't seen my video, RAW vs JPEG, I'll actually link it at the end of the video or down in the description. Also, you're gonna wanna make sure that you're shooting in manual mode because you're gonna wanna set your aperture, your shutter speed, and your ISO specifically. Second, since you're shooting at night, you're gonna want your settings to allow as much light in without any additional extra noise. So whatever your f-stop's lowest setting is for your lens, just crank that baby down to as low as it can go. Whether it's 2.8, 1.2, 4, the lowest it can go, that's the first setting. Next is shutter speed. Now remember, your shutter's gonna be open a very long time so it can create motion blur. That's why a tripod is absolutely required because you will not be able to do sharp night photography handheld. The other thing to remember is the earth is actually rotating. So with a really long shutter, you can actually create motion blur in the stars. And that's why people use star trackers because the camera attaches to the star tracker and it adjusts as the earth turns. That's why people can do really long exposures and still get tacked sharp stars but for basics I found a 15 to 25 second range is is pretty good when you get to 30 plus I, I tend to find that I personally get a little bit of blur in the in the stars final setting is ISO and I like to keep this one as low as possible because the higher the ISO the more noise you're gonna introduce into your image for me after playing with the settings a lot I found that 3200 is kind of like my sweet spot where I get enough sensitivity in the sensor to pick up the little pinpricks of stars but it doesn't add a lot of noise now I use a Canon 6D and it works pretty good with those settings, but different cameras, some are better at higher ISOs and some are worse. You just kind of have to play around with your specific camera to find the settings that work perfectly for you. This will give you a range to kind of start with though. If you set these settings and then tweak them as needed, you'll, you'll eventually find exactly what works great for your camera. Finally, having a remote trigger is really beneficial, but if you don't, then you wanna set your camera timer to two or more seconds, because what happens is that little action of pushing the shutter can cause a little bit of camera shake, and your shutter is gonna be open a long time. So any kind of movement can cause those stars to kind of blur a little. Even a big gust of wind that can wobble the tripod will create a little bit of shake. So just pay attention to that, and you might have to take a couple extra photos just for that reason. These are the settings that I found that work great for simple simple basic night photography. When you see those photos that have the perfectly exposed Milky Way and the perfectly exposed foreground, well those are generally multiple images and editing and other techniques. You can't take those photos with one shot, it's just not doable. So I don't want you to get discouraged when you haven't been able to figure that out. This is just basic night photography and we can get into that stuff a little bit later, but you can still take some amazing night photography with what we went over in this video. Now I'm gonna wait for nightfall so we can get some really good night shots and then we're gonna jump into editing. All right, so we're here in Lightroom. Now just as a quick note, I uh, unfortunately picked the night where the moon is super bright and it got a little bit cloudy. So I wasn't able to get actually shots from that particular night. So we're just gonna use two shots that I have from previous occasions when I did some night shooting. So the first image we're gonna look at is a shot that I took in Flagler Beach in Florida. This is the pier going out into the water. This light out here is actually a shrimp boat, which I really liked and was glad I was able to capture. You'll notice that the water's really smooth. That's because I was using a shutter of 15 seconds. If you, if you see here, my ISO was 400, my uh, lens, I was at a 16 millimeter. My f-stop was at 2.8 with a 15 second shutter. So those were my settings for this one here. So let's close that and get into the basic edit. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna up the exposure just a, a tad to like 0.30 just so I can see what we're working with. Also, it was a little bit dark. Uh, then the contrast, we're gonna up to about, I think we're gonna go to about 46. That looks good. Uh, highlights, I want to brighten it up. I want to see the image. I yeah, there you go. You see that? So we're gonna go. We're gonna pump that up to a, quite a bit, just so we make those 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 bright lights pop. Uh, shadows doesn't look like we need to mess with the shadows. I mean, if we up them, it kind of hazes it out a little. If we lower them, darkens. It doesn't really do too much. So we're gonna leave that at zero. The whites, I really want my whites to pop. So I'm gonna bring that up to about 40, 41, something like that. That's looking really good. Uh, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna make it a little bit clear. So I'm gonna use the clarity and I'm gonna up that to about 24. Ooh, yeah, there we go. 
Whew, that's looking good. I like it. So that's really bringing the image out. And remember, this is with no additional light. I didn't like the, I didn't like the bridge or anything like that. This was just taking a picture with those settings. So the next thing, I think there's a little bit of haze here just from the sea mist. I don't think you can really see it, but if we if we up the dehaze to a, a little bit, you see how it just makes the image really, it makes it a lot clearer. So if we reset that, you see how it's, it's just kind of hazy, and if we up it to about 40, 3940, that just makes the image look really, really clean. When doing night photography, split toning can be your best friend. It can really create a, a character to your image. So split toning, it adds color in all the highlights or all the shadows, and you can choose exactly how much you want in that. For this one, I wanna add shadows. So if you hold the option button and you click on the, the hue slider, it'll show you at full saturation, so the full color if you used it completely, and it'll show you which color you're using. So I think I wanna add like a little bluish, purplish tint, so right there, and then I think what I'm gonna do is just a shade. So just a wee bit, so maybe 10. So you see the, it's very subtle, but it just adds a little bit of blue to the image, gives it that kind of like cool feeling. I really like that. If you zoom in, you see this, you can see the stars, but you can also see the little bit of fuzziness. That's the noise from the image. So we're gonna try and fix that a little. We're gonna go into detail. Uh, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna raise the sharpening just to about, to about 80. That's, that's quite a bit of sharpening, but we're gonna raise it. And you can tell that it, it increased the noise just a little. You see how it sharpened the dots, but it also increased noise. So that's okay. So we're gonna take some of that noise out by raising the luminance slider to about 20. I generally like to make the luminance and the amount of sharpening equal 100 seems to work pretty well. So if the sharpening is 60, luminance is 40, or so forth. You can tweak, play around with that to see what works better. But you see how that, made a quite a big difference so let's see before after it's very subtle but it does make a difference and then just to kind of cap the image and we could do more to this but this is just a basic edit what we're going to do is we're going to go to the effects tab and we're going to add a little bit of vignette not too much just a little just to darken those edges and pull you into the image and there we go that's all there is to that one i think that one's pretty nice so before after before, after. That's a big difference. Okay, so let's go to the next one. This is a Milky Way shot that I shot at the same place, at Dream Rock Silo, right on the deck. Now this was beautiful. Now this orange here, this is, see that light right there? That's cast by a lot of that. Without that orange light, this image would be so much better. But because we had that, that's what we had to work with. So let's go ahead and look at the settings first. Let's close all these here. So my settings for this one, I shot it at ISO 2000 at a 16 millimeter, so super wide. I did an f2.8 to allow a lot of light in, and I did a 15 second timer. Again, no additional light, no, no additional equipment, nothing like that. Okay, so for this one, it seems very bright. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, first thing we're gonna do is lower the exposure, just a shade, just a tick. I think that looks good. Then we're gonna up the contrast to about plus 30 somewhere around there. Yep, I think that looks good. And then the highlights, we're gonna try and take out all of that orange. So we're just gonna drop the highlights all the way down. Shadows, let's go ahead and darken it up a little. And let's say how about minus 40. That's looking quite dark right now, but that's okay, we'll get there. Uh, the whites, this is where we're gonna make the stars pop. So we're gonna raise, ooh, too much. We're gonna raise, no, oh, that, that actually looks pretty good. <laughs> right to there. And then the blacks, we're gonna make the image darker. So we're gonna lower the blacks to, let's say, minus 50. That's looking good. Before, after, big difference, looking good so far. The next step, um, we're gonna try and remove some of the haze with, it depends on how the night is. I try and use the dehaze tool very, in a very limited manner. So we're gonna go ahead and up the dehaze just a shade. Uh, let's see, my mouse is not working. Right, let's say, let's go to, plus 15, I think that's plenty. Uh, and then let's see, the next step, I think with this one, we can kind of do a little bit of tone curve action. We're gonna drop the shadows just a shade. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, darken that image. Ooh, that looks better. Okay, uh, you see the before, 
See how it just darkens that bottom part? That's, that's what we want to do because we want to try and remove some of that orange. To remove more of the orange, we're going to go into the HSL and color section. HSL is hue, saturation, and luminance. We're going to drop the oranges and the yellows to try and remove some of that, that color at the bottom there. So let's, let's see what looks good. We're gonna, we don't want to do too much because then it just it looks fake, it looks faded. So how about 45 and then for the yellows, let's do, let's do 58. So it's not bad. I really wish that orange wasn't there. It kind of ruins the image for me, but you can still see it, it's a nice image. It came out really good. Next step, we're going to try and eliminate some of the noise. So let's go into detail and you know, I'm not going to sharpen anything. I don't think that's needed but we're gonna try and remove some of the noise. So let's do 20 again. See how that looks. So let's see the before of the noise. Yeah, you see how that all that color noise and we turn on 20 and it just cleans it up a little. Just kind of purifies the image a little, makes it look a little bit nicer. And then finally, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a little vignette and that's just gonna darken the edges a little and pull you into the image more. Uh, and a cool little trick that I like to do is the brush tool. If you come up here and click the brush tool, and what we're gonna do is you can see the Milky Way here, it's not super bright, but you can see it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna paint right on top of it, and then we're gonna up the exposure. Now if you do this too much, it looks fake, but if you do it just a shade, it kinda looks like the galaxy is shining. So if you do it too much, it looks clearly fake. If you do it too little, well, obviously too dark, but if you do it just a shade, I think right there is perfect. It just kind of makes it pop a little. That's what you see when you see those images with the Milky Way is really glowing. They've kind of enhanced it a little. And if you want to make it spacey or give it a stylistic look, you can use the white balance tool with the brush to add a little color. So let's say we make it a little green. Well, that gives it a little kind of a galaxy look. I don't think that looks great here. I think magenta would be better. So we're going to go up to about 16, I think. Yeah, look at that, it looks so good. Actually, I think that might be a little too much, so let's dial it down just a shade. What if we add orange? Eh, too much, too blue, and nah, we'll leave that alone. Okay, good, so here's the before, which is kind of a, it's a decent image, but with our enhancements, it looks so much better. I mean, that looks way better. And that's the basic editing. I mean, that's super simple. You could really get more involved in this, but this is a super basic edit that can really make your night photography stand out. Now let's, uh, let's go back to yesterday and wrap up this video. That about wraps up how to take basic night photography and get really sharp photos. Now, if you know of any other techniques, let me know down in the comments. I am not at all an expert when it comes to this, but with these techniques, I have been able to get some really nice night photography shots. Night photography can be so much fun and you can create some amazing results. I hope this video helps you create what you envision. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And as always, remember to enjoy the journey that is exploring photography. I'll see you guys next time. Amazing results. Damn it, they're so windy. All the whole damn video. Night photography. Just, I need, I need one minute. So those are, decaf. Decaf, stop rubbing up against the, come here. Come here. So this is decaf. She's been rubbing up on the tripod, causing it to, to wobble. Can you, can you let me film? Okay. Moving on.